So to begin, I just want to take a moment to express gratitude for the opportunity to be here today, for the legendary hospitality of the Disneyland Resort, the beauty of this wonderful hotel, the opportunity to hear from Josh today, one of our community's greatest business leaders, and the chance to be with all of you. You guys are all such good friends, and I'm so glad you're here, so thank you for being here today to hear from Josh. Um, and I just want to thank the Disneyland Resort for bringing us here and for OC Forum. I sit on the board of OC Forum. What an amazing organization. So I just want to say thank you to OC Forum for letting me be part of it and for being here today. So thank you again. So it is my distinct honor now to introduce Josh tomorrow. As the president of the Disneyland Resort, Josh is responsible for leading all facets of business for the resort's two theme parks three hotels, and downtown Disney District. He began his 21-year Disney career at the Disneyland Resort in 1998 and has held various leadership positions throughout his tenure. Prior to his return to Anaheim in 2018, Josh was the Senior Vice President of Commercial Strategy for the Walt Disney World Resort. Josh earned his bachelor's degree in business administration from Georgetown University, and he sits on the board at Chalk Children's, which we are extremely grateful for, uh, and the University of California, Irvine, uh, UCI CEO roundtable, and he serves as a commissioner of Visit California. So quickly before Josh comes out, I want to tell you I've gotten the chance to get to know Josh because he serves on our board, and my office is right outside the boardroom, so I get to see him when he comes to meetings. And I'm just struck by his very special combination of amazing optimism and vision, but also essential pragmatism. And I think that it's not always easy to strike that balance, and I think that is one of the things that makes a great leader. And uh, Bono, who uh, the lead singer of U2, said um, that idealism detached from action is just a dream. But idealism allied with pragmatism with rolling up your sleeves and making the world bend just a bit is very exciting. So I know Josh is going to share some of that excitement and that vision with us today. And so without further ado, I welcome him up here. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. I know this is a bit of a different venue from where you typically uh, hold these events, but hopefully a nice little uh, change, and hopefully we can keep you entertained. Uh, before we get going here, I love this place. Um, genuinely love uh, being a cast member here at the Disneyland Resort, number one. Number two, I've got a lot of things I want to tell you today. 
the combination of those two things, loving a place and having a lot to say, should suggest, giving constrained time, that I should have a script. I don't have a script, but I am going to do my best to stay on track and hopefully be a bit entertaining and give you some messages that you can uh, take away from here. This is an amazing time to be at the Disneyland Resort for me, for all the cast members here, and hopefully for the community as well. As, as all of you probably know, we just opened Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I'm hoping that some of you actually had a chance uh, to get out there and experience it. The holiday season, believe it or not, it's the holiday season, just opened up across our, our resort. Um, and we have made some big announcements um, at our D23 conference that, that just took place here um, in, uh, in Anaheim. My intent here is to tell you a little bit about why we think we're successful, what we're doing, and how we're managing this business so that you can, you can again, take that back to home or to your businesses. The themes that you'll hear here, uh, probably three broad themes. Number one, um, how to be a great employer, which we think we are. Number two, how to be a caring neighbor. And number three, how to make your business thrive. On that last one, this is a big business. There are a lot of pieces and parts to the, the Disneyland Resort. We have 31,000 cast members walking around this place, making magic every single day. The actions and, and investments that we make are going to have ripple effects across the, the community, whether that's vendors that we're working with, a big investment like we just made in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, operating participants that might be at downtown Disney, hotels and, and restaurants. When we are successful here at the Disneyland Resort, by virtue of that, Orange County and Anaheim will be successful as well. It's probably obvious that that's, that's the case. It's the case with many businesses. But we'd like to know, what is that benefit? How does, how does that work from an economic perspective? And so, we commissioned an economic impact study. We've done this before. Um, we've actually worked with the Cal State Fullerton team. There are uh, some of them sitting here at the table. I wanted to call out specifically Dr. Anil Puri. Um, maybe you could stand up for a second, Doctor. So Dr. Puri, uh, as I understand it, uh, I'm just getting to know him right now, is the rock star of economists in the community, um, has done a stellar job for us on this economic study. Um, as I said, this business is, is complex, and there are a lot of moving parts. And the way, that we are, the way that we think about an economic study is everything from you know, a wage that we might pay a cast member to a, a churro um, and a churro cart that might be in our uh, park that we may be working with a vendor with to a guest who decides to come here from Texas and stay in a local area hotel. But it follows all the way through. So a cast member that's earning a wage here, if they go out and spend that somewhere in their community, there's an economic impact associated with that. Or if that churro maker has to invest in another machine to make sure that they're uh, keeping up with the churro demand in the park, there's also an economic impact associated with that as well. So things ripple through the community when we make investments and when our business thrives. We did an economic study five years ago, and we did it right after we had done the expansion of Disney's California Adventure. So that's when Cars Land came in. That was actually in 2012, so 2013, uh, we did another study. We figured five years later, it's time to do it again. So here we are. I'm just gonna give you the headlines here. I know that there are a lot of people in the audience that aren't economists and don't care for all the details, no disrespect, uh, Dr. Perry. but I'll keep it high level, and then you can, of course, ask a whole bunch of questions of the team if you'd like to. Let's start with the total economic output that comes by virtue of the Disneyland Resort being here. That's a big number. That number is $8.5 billion. $8.5 billion. And so while that number is impressive from an absolute perspective, I think what's more impressive is if you index back to where we started this five years ago, Every year, it's grown by 9%, a 9% compounded annual growth rate from 2013. More impressive than that is that the absolute number has increased by 50% in five years, 50%. So $8.5 billion by virtue of the fact that we are all collectively making investments in this, in this community. That's a big number and just goes to show you the impact that we can have um, on California, Orange County, et cetera. The next thing I wanted to touch on is new jobs. This is really important. So as we create this economic activity, more people are employed. So if you look around, it's not just Disneyland. We have a, we have a new 
uh, land in Disneyland, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and we've hired a lot of new cast members to live in that land. But there are also new restaurants here. There are new developments. I think from the time the study was done before till now, there's 1,500 new rooms, uh, hotel rooms in the area. And all of that activity creates jobs. So when we did the study with the team, um, the number of jobs that, due to the Disneyland Resort being here, that have been created is 78,000 jobs. 73% of those jobs are right here in Orange County. And that actually represents 4% of all the jobs in Orange County. Again, similar to the way that we talked about the total economic impact, uh, the growth rate from 2013, 7% compounded annually. What's even more interesting than that is that that growth rate is two to three times the growth rate of Orange County. So these are big deals. It's so putting people in, in jobs and materially changing the landscape of Orange County. The third piece I wanted to touch on was the state and local tax revenues. So by virtue of the Disneyland Resort being here and all of our affiliates and associated uh, businesses, um, we generated $510 million in state and local tax revenues. That's a 6.5% compound annual growth rate since, since 2013. And one-third, Mayor Sidhu, one-third of those taxes go to the Anaheim General Fund, which helps to make the city thrive. And so again, the, the engine seems to be working here. And when the engine works here, it ripples into the community. And each of you have your own economic impact in Orange County and in Southern California. Uh, on your chair, maybe underneath your chairs now, the team's left you with a packet. And so inside of there, there are a, there's a lot more uh, in depth there. And again, the team is here to answer any questions that you might have on the numbers that I've cited or the, the numbers that are inside of the, pa the packet. So that's great, these are big numbers. Um, and like I said, there maybe aren't a whole bunch of economists in the room. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about the input. I just talked to you about the output. This is what comes by virtue of running a business effectively. But how do you get there? What's the starting point? About a year ago, maybe a little bit more, I was relatively new in this position, maybe still a bit wet behind the, the ears, and I stood in front of a group. Maybe some of you were there. Uh, it was the state of the resort. And, and I started to talk about something that I was calling the three C's. Um, and they're simple. And sometimes standing up, on here, standing up here on stage, I think maybe they're too simple. But what I've learned over the past couple years is if you just stay directed at the things that are most important to your business and you live them every single day, you will get a response in your business. Those three C's that I talked about, and in this order, cast, community, and commercial. It sounds obvious. Let me just describe them at a very high level, and then if you would allow me, I'd like to go into a little bit more depth on each one of these. So let's start with CAST. As I said at the start here, I love this job. I literally love it. When I got the call and they said, Josh, do you want to be the president of the Disneyland Resort? I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And uh, up until this point right now, when people say that, I still get, I still get chills. And in the first week that I was here, I found myself up on stage in front of hundreds of cast members, um, still kind of floating a bit, and maybe not having thought fully through what I was going to say or how I was going to respond to questions. And inevitably, somebody stands up and says, well, what are your priorities? I responded instinctively, the cast should be our first priority. And I think my instincts were right on that. And as I spent more time with the cast members, it turns out uh, we had some work to do there, and we will always have work to do there, but that will be the number one thing that we need to focus on such that the rest of the business works. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about how we're actually doing that in a moment. So CAST is number one. Community is number two. There are actually some of you in this room when I first got here, I think it was actually my first day, and I stood up on stage with Michael Koglazier, my predecessor, and he was introducing me to everyone. It was probably that night or shortly thereafter that I realized that the climate that I was entering into was just a little bit different from the climate I remembered from a community perspective when I started uh, 21 years ago. I felt very misunderstood and because I had so much passion in my heart for what this company is and who our cast members are and what we try to do, 
uh, I knew that this had to be a priority. Not just a little short stint priority, but community had to be a pillar for us. And we had to lean in aggressively. And again, if you'll indulge me, I want to talk to you a little bit about how we've uh, thought about the community and the actions that we've taken on that front. And the third one is commercial. What program can I put in place to further my business to drive that top line to be more efficient in the middle, a new product, a new shiny thing? And while we all need to do that, I think you need to have those first two in place and secure before you get to the third. Um, that's a very hard thing to do. Any of you that run businesses or any that you have that have jobs where you're trying to push the business, to step back for a moment and think about the fundamentals is a very difficult thing to do. So cast, community, and commercial. Sounds very simple, but we are staying very, very focused on that and, and making progress on that. It's easy to say, not necessarily easy to do. This place is big. You can get stifled and not know what to do, but if you just start to make moves, you'll see some benefit. So I'd like to walk you through that for a moment, if I, if I could. Let's start with that first C, uh, that's cast. Jay's gonna put up a, a picture here. Now you see these pictures, and I see them every day, and this is a picture that you would fully expect to see on a billboard, in a Disney commercial, any place that we're advertising. Everybody's smiling, there are no flaws in this picture, it is perfect, same one here. But here's the reality, behind these pictures are actual people. There are actual cast members. There are people that come from different backgrounds. There are cast members that have problems at home. There are cast members that have dreams and, and ambitions. There are cast members that want to have a conversation uh, with somebody, regardless of where their position might be. These are real people, and these people are really important as it relates to what actually happens here at the Disneyland Resort. And I fundamentally believe um, if you get this right, in any of your businesses, if you get this right, the rest comes. Uh, it might sound like a gamble. I can guarantee you that is not a gamble. If you get it right, they will come. I have, and my team, have a vision here. Not a vision that you write down on a piece of paper and post in your hallway and hope that somebody maybe sees it once in a while, but simply stated, the Disneyland Resort should be the best place to work in the world. Now, I think I can confidently stand up here and say that, and I actually think that that can happen. I genuinely think that that can happen. And if we wake up every morning, if we go to every meeting, and the first thing on the agenda, which it is for me, is cast, that can happen. Is that the case right now? I don't know, some people might say yes, but others might say we've got some room to go, and that's why this will never change. Cast needs to be at the top of the list. I wanna flip back as, as I talked about some of the things that we've done to a number that I just presented to you, and that was 78,000 jobs have been created by virtue of the Disneyland Resort being here. It's an impressive number. There are critics, though. I'm very used to this now. 78,000 jobs, great. So you've created entry-level jobs. This is the tourism industry. How are we gonna sustain ourselves? Let's think this through. 78,000 jobs, an opportunity for somebody to come into the workforce. Not only an opportunity for somebody to come into the workforce, but an opportunity for us to create a platform, an opportunity for us to create a springboard for somebody to become the president of the Disneyland Resort. I started here in an entry-level position. This is all possible, and these jobs are incredibly valuable for Anaheim. Particularly, if you think about it, in the context of the things that we're starting to do. Let's take the Aspire program. So imagine one of those 78,000 people coming in and wanting to get an education. And imagine if the Walt Disney Company said, we're gonna put $150 million into an education program to make sure that everybody has that opportunity. And imagine if that program was friction free. I am selling balloons on Main Street. I wanna be an accountant. I don't wanna to have to ask my manager if I can go get a degree. I don't wanna pay for my books. I just wanna go get a good education and I'd like to do something different or evolve my career. Imagine if that existed. It does, and we're doing that here at the, at the Disneyland Resort. In fact, we just celebrated our one year anniversary in front of the, the castle. And so you can see here a picture of some of the cast members that have engaged and in, in aspired. I got a chance to, to get out there and, and talk to these cast members. It's amazing. You talk to cast members who weren't able to finish their high school degree, they're getting their high school degree. You talk to cast members, like I said, who are selling balloons or selling churros and want to become an accountant or an artist, they're getting their education to, to do that. I've talked to folks that already had their masters and are now going for their second masters. Their lives are materially changed. 
The other interesting thing is that the people that are showing up at our door, when they knock on our door and they submit their application to become a Disney cast member, what they're telling us is the reason they're coming is because we have the Aspire program. I want to have a little bit of fun here for a second. Uh, as this picture reminds me, and I think Jay's got some things in here. Uh, not only am I not great at sticking on script, um, I'm usually late for things. And so as we were staging this, uh, this picture and the photographer was snapping away, of course I, I came late. And if you kind of look in the background there, um, they were all staged trying to get the park open. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there I am. Uh, there I am. We did end up getting a better picture, but I could hear them at the front saying, where's Josh? Isn't he supposed to be here? And I was kind of hopping up and down in the background doing this. But uh, uh, so anyway, it's, it's a great event. It's great to talk to these cast members and see how we're changing, uh, changing their lives. We're working with great universities like Brandman University, and, and we just added the University of, of Arizona. I thought if you'd, if you'd let me for a moment, just um, because it's, it's heartfelt, I wanted to show you a quick video of some of those cast members that have actually engaged in the, uh, the Aspire, or, or are in the program right now, and what it means to them. So Jay, if we could run that. School isn't something that I ever thought that I would be able to go back to because now with my family situation, being married, having a child, that money goes to my son. This program will make a difference by helping me to further my education, which will help me to further my career. This is a dream come true. It's something that I've always wanted and I truly thought was not going to happen for me. To be in the Aspire program for almost a year now is absolutely phenomenal. It has been such a dream come true. It's a program that has completely changed everything in my life. I think that if somebody really wants to pursue their education, having this opportunity to do it with the support of Disney, it makes the difference. It has given me the opportunity to step forward and go, I can be more than just what I am now. Two things I'm really proud of. One, getting this far and still having that momentum, still having the drive to continue, and making a, the Dean's List, juggling work, family, school, and getting good grades. Right now, my end goal is the end of my general education, and every single class that I take, even if it's just one at a time, is one step closer to that end goal. I have every intention of traveling to Denver to pick up my diploma in person. I have waited such a long time for that moment. <laughs> it's something that I have wanted so desperately for such a long time that there is no way that I'm going to miss out on that opportunity. I still pinch myself that this is real. It's still a dream-like state. So let's get back together in a year <laughs> when I'll be almost done. So as you can tell, you know, I'm very proud of this program. All the cast members here are proud of this program. You might say, so why, you know, why do I care? Uh, here's the reality. Uh, and my team kind of looked at me like I was crazy the first time we announced this, but if one of those cast members that you just saw on the video or that I talked to in front of the castle gets their degree in whatever they decide to study, and the moment they're finished, they say, I'm out of here. I'm gonna move on from Disney. And any one of you out there who has a business, they say, I wanna go work for that person, they can go. And in fact, we would encourage that to happen. So this is a big deal, and again, it goes back to this ripple effect. Somebody coming here, an opening job, an opportunity to get a high school degree, um, become an accountant, get another master's, and they can go out into the community and serve in a way that fulfills their dream. And this is all real, and it's happening today. I want to move on now to the next um, item, which is relatively new for us, and this is child care. You see up here a, a picture of me in my office with you know, 15 or, or 20 cast members. We, we got a group of cast members together. We wanted to further this idea of what else can we do to support you uh, so that you can fulfill your dreams. And what we heard back loud and clear was childcare. Um, it is very difficult to come in to work every day and feel like your family is being taken care of. It's increasingly difficult 
these days to do that. Childcare is very expensive, as, as some of you probably know, in, in Southern California. So we heard from these cast members. We brought them back, and we took this photo, and we announced that the Disneyland Resort was going to make a $10 million annual commitment to curb the cost of, of childcare. This is a big deal, and this is, again, you can be at work and feel comfortable that your family is, is comfortable. In addition to this childcare uh, support, we also offer backup care if something goes wrong in your schedule, a childcare referral program, homework help, parenting resources, et cetera, to make sure that you're whole. So again, we're gonna keep layering these things on to make sure that the cast member's life is rounded and secure and they feel like we have our arms around them. You might wonder if I'm avoiding the question of, well, what are you paying your cast members? Well, I'm not. Um, you know, this has been um, a long journey for us and something that we're very, very proud of. But, you know, we've doubled down our, our efforts to support all of our cast members in terms of, of what, they're, what we're paying them. Last year, we signed a contract with one of our unions called Local 11 so, uh, to set wages at $15 an hour for, for non-tipped cast members. And then just this week, we ratified uh, a contract with our Local 50 union, which is a, a big union on the, on the food and beverage side, uh, to get them to the $15 starting rate as well. And essentially what this means in very simple terms is a cast member who was at an entry level wage prior to this ratification is gonna make 25% more than they were making before we signed this deal. 25% more like that. And this, by the way, is 16 months ahead of schedule. So we weren't gonna sit around and wait, we wanted to aggressively get after this. And when you combine wage with education, with childcare, and with leaders that care, you can start to feel the culture changing. So wages, childcare, education. There's also a lot of fun stuff here. This is the Disneyland Resort. I mean, right outside of these walls and you know, right inside of this hotel, there's a lot of cool stuff here. And so we wanna make sure that we take full advantage of that, further the culture, and make sure cast members don't feel like they're showing up here to work, but that they're woven into the fabric. And they feel some advantage of working here at the Disneyland Resort. So I wanted to welcome someone up on stage with me to have a little bit of fun with this. Uh, this is Justin Rapp. Uh, Justin, come on up. Justin's our Disneyland Resort Ambassador. Okay. Now, Justin typically gets to stand in front of groups, and it's very rehearsed, so this is, he doesn't like this, but here we go. All right, so first of all, what is an ambassador? It's a great question. So an ambassador, our main function is to serve as a representative for all of our 31,000 cast members, and that's kind of the tradition started back in 1965, actually, and it's continued ever since then, and the role has changed and evolved over the years, but at the basis, we're here to represent the cast. Cool. Okay, the whole interview process is like American Idol, like you got to go through all these crazy interviews and do all this acting <laughs> stuff, and you made it through, for good reason, I should say. All right, I want to talk about three things. Yes. Uh, and again, this is how do we take advantage of the workplace that we're in here. Uh, the first is an event that we put on right before we were opening Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. To the extent that we can bring our cast in to see things and be part of things before the general public gets to see it, we want to do that. So our vice president of the Disneyland uh, Park, a woman by the name of Chris Tyler, came to me in my office and said, hey, we're just doing the new costumes, which look fantastic, by the way. We're doing the new costumes for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Why don't we do a fashion show? And I was, of course, like, I'm in. Like, I, I will put that costume on, and I will walk down that stage, and let's do it at midnight, you know, after the park is, is closed, and let's, let's see what can happen here. And we figured maybe we get three, four, maybe 500 people. 7,000 people showed up. Yep. <laughs> we did not have enough churros. <laughs> So uh, I think you see some images here. That was not planned, but the cast members had a fantastic time. Justin, you were there doing your thing. What did it feel like? It was a rock concert, without a doubt. <laughs> I mean, this, seriously, this, that's what it felt like. You know, uh, myself and my other half, my other ambassador with me, Rafa, we went on stage and just the crowd went wild. And I've never seen the park like that ever. That includes operating hours. So this was unlike anything I've ever seen before. I think the crazy part about it is that, you know, I had many friends who had this event. They just worked an eight-hour shift. So there they are working an eight-hour shift, and like you were saying, it's midnight. After working eight hours, and they come out for what became a huge party. I and mean, we had attractions open, we had churros, we had food, music going. It was absolutely unbelievable. And a lot of wonderful memories that were made, and just incredible, incredible moments throughout the entire evening. But I gotta say, one of my, my favorite moments of the, of the entire evening was 
there was one thing in particular that stood out. Mm -hmm. That was your hat. Uh. Do we have a picture of, of the hat? There it is. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I just, I, I had to wonder, I saw this, and, I, and you know, the, the, citizens, the residents of Batu, they get to choose their own costumes and everything, and then what they wear every day, and that was, that was the choice. Uh, no. Okay, I, I get the point. <laughs> These things are important. Uh, because again, it's weaving the cast member back into the fabric of our organization. In fact, what we did here is we allowed them to post and tweet about what they were seeing before the rest of the world has, which makes them feel empowered and see things before the rest of the community had. So that was number one, fashion show. Uh, the second thing I, did actually, I didn't get a chance to participate in, so you could talk a little bit about this one, but health and wellness is a big deal for us, and I could go into a, a ton of detail here about how we make sure these 31,000 cast members are feeling good and exercising, and we're giving them the tools that they need to, to do that. Uh, but we do yoga out at the castle, once a year, so maybe you just talk about that. Oh, we do. So we all gather in front of the castle. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. First of all, I mean, the park is obviously closed, so it's very early in the morning. You arrive while the sun is still down, and then you see the sun rise behind the castle while doing yoga. And you know, Disneyland's a, a pretty magical place. I mean, I used to come here as a guest all the time, but then I think about the fact that this is an experience that, I'm sorry, most of you in this room will never have. You know, this is something that's just for the <laughs> cast members, and it's really special. And I think about the fact that that how special it is to be a cast member. And it's moments like that, it's moments like the fashion party where truly this is something that just belongs to our cast. Yep. And it was a special moment seeing hundreds, I mean hundreds of cast members wake up at 5 a.m. to watch the sunrise and do some yoga. That's why I was not there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, great. So one more to talk about here. Uh, who's been on the Disneyland canoes before? All right, fair amount. I'd say at least 40, 50% of you. So we've got this long-standing tradition of cast members and races on the rivers of America. So maybe, Justin, tell us a little bit about the history here. Absolutely. It's a tradition that goes back to the 1960s, actually, if you can believe that. And so cast members will get in canoes and they'll race around Tom Sawyer Island before a, a time race. And then this goes on for weeks. So you have a couple weeks to practice, and then slowly you start eliminating until you get down to one final team. And I mean, you're waking up again very early in the morning, 5, 6 a.m., going around the river, again, just with your cast members coming together for a wonderful time. You had a team in here. I did. For the first time ever, as the ambassador, we decided to assemble a team of cast members from all across the resorts. So we had people from food and beverage, from retail, and we got all their submissions in, and we created our own team, and, uh, and we, we hit the river every morning for a few weeks. And, and you assembled a, a team I assembled yourself? a team as well. This one I was very much willing to get up early for, and uh, I put this team together, uh, some of the executives on my team. And I got to tell you, I was as close to 100% confident that I could take this thing home. Uh, in fact, you can't see it that closely, but the, the shirts are called One and Done, because we were just going to do one sprint, and I was going to take this thing, this thing home. One and done. And you challenged our team, I of course, to, team. to one race, one and done. I won't say a whole lot in this video, but you can see that, that other canoe that's kind of you know, in the head, in the distance, in the lead. That's my team. Uh, let's see how you all did. Let's take a look. This thing is not turning. We're not turning. We're not turning. We're not turning. Wait, they're going to hit the dock. Keep going. They're going to hit the dock. Keep going. There was one part about your team name that was very, very fitting. You guys were done. It, it, was, it was over. It was toast. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I, I, I genuinely believed we were going to win that race. And of course, I had hyped it up. Uh, the, the gentleman that you heard saying, the boat's not turning. It's not turning. That's a guy by the name of George Hanna. He's the head of our digital and technology group. He's no longer with the company. <laughs> <laughs> but next year, I will be back. <laughs> Rematch it is. <laughs> Rematch it is. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Okay, so um, it, it, sounds, it sounds fun, and you might be, again, like, why are you talking about This is important. This is the stuff that brings a community together and makes our cast members want to be here and deliver the magic that they're delivering. I want to move on to the second C, and again, that's, that's community. I said to you before, when I got here, I felt a little bit off. I felt like we were looked at as a bit plastic-y, plastic 
a little bit corporate, but the reality is before I ever got here, we were doing a lot of stuff in the com community. In fact, $21 million in donations every year. This is for things like education, children's hospitals, homelessness, which I'll talk about in a moment, workforce development. We were out there. I think it's always hard from a community perspective or a philanthropy perspective to beat your chest and talk about what you're doing. But the reality is I think we need to start talking about what we were actually doing. And I thought there was an opportunity to actually do more. So let me just cover a couple of things here. The first is our volunteers. This is our uh, crew of cast members who go beyond the berm out into the community and they make material differences in, in people's lives, in the community, uh, et cetera. And in about a week or so, I'm actually gonna head to uh, a park near La Palma and we're gonna be building uh, a playground with the help of uh, partners from YMCA. Uh, Mayor was out there with me on the, on the last build, and Kaboom, who helps us build these, these great playgrounds. Uh, that'll be our 12th installation. The one before, which the mayor was actually at with me, we did this one in January. And this one was really special. I did get a chance to go out there um, and work on this one as well. But we worked with our team, one of our diversity resource uh, groups. That group is called Cast Able. And this group focuses on inclusivity surrounding mental and physical disabilities. And we had really one special cast member who looked at this as not an opportunity just to build another park, uh, but being part of this cast able group and actually having a child that had some special needs said, we could do this differently. We could create um, a, a park that's more accessible for, for children that might not otherwise get a chance to play. So Jenny couldn't be here today, but I wanted to show you a quick video about the work that we did there. Hi, welcome to Barton Park in Anaheim. This is the resort's 11 sponsored Kaboom Playground build. It came to life through the collaboration between the Disneyland Resort, the City of Anaheim, members of the community, the YMCA, and even children at Barton Elementary. What makes this play structure unique is that it includes several adaptive features. It has ramps, adaptive surfacing, braille boards, sensory friendly equipment, adaptive swings, and even an adaptive version of a merry-go-round. But what makes this truly magical is that it allows children of all abilities to play alongside one another. So if you have the opportunity, please come out to Barton Park and check out this amazing playground. So again, th this is a cast member who's engaged here at work, feels like she has a voice. She used that voice and we changed a playground. And now we'll be thinking about this differently going forward. When you think of Disney, it's easy for you to think about children and our, our, our work with kids, but the reality is there's other work that needs to be done in the community as well. We all know homelessness is a real issue here, and it's sometimes hard to think about the Disneyland brand and homelessness, but we have a responsibility to lean into this and do something to change the trajectory that we'd otherwise uh, be on. Uh, this took a lot of work, but we ended up in a position where we decided that we were gonna put $5 million into a trust to be able to help with affordable housing here in Orange County. And so what's happening by virtue of that is, as an example, the Manchester Project, which will be breaking ground in, in 2020, it's a 102 unit affordable uh, housing project, is now able to, to get the funding that they need uh, to, to put this new uh, facility up. And we're gonna to continue to push in this regard. And we're gonna be very visible, very vocal, and work with all of our partners here on, on homelessness. Now homelessness isn't just about where people are housed, but it's about how to make them productive members of society again. And again, when I stood up on stage uh, just, uh, I think less than a year ago in front of some of you, we talked about this new operation that was coming into town called Chrysalis. And Chrysalis was, was there to help people get back on their feet and get them gainfully employed. We heard this, we heard the city talk about it, we heard some of our partners talk about it, and we decided to put $600,000 into the Chrysalis organization to make sure that they could get up and running here in Anaheim. And what they've done in a very short amount of time is astounding. So to talk a little bit more about this, I wanted to invite Michelle De La Cruz up to the stage to help us here. Well, first, tell us a little bit about Chrysalis and maybe tell us about what your role at Chrysalis is. Yeah, so Chrysalis is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping low-income and homeless individuals um, overcome certain barriers to their job search. So we provide the tools and resources uh, to help them you know, overcome those barriers, to help them uh, find and keep a job. So how long have you been in operation? Um, 
Christmas in Orange County has been open since November, okay. uh, so almost a year. So not that long, Yes. and I understand you just had your 100th job placement. Right, yes, so that was super exciting. We right now have um, a little over 135 um, people placed in jobs now, so we're super excited for that because so it's we- it's 135 now. Yes, a little over 135, and we surpassed that goal within four months, well, four months earlier, so we are super excited to continue helping serve um, our community. Great, and then volunteers? are there as well helping. Right, so we are super privileged and so grateful for our Disney volunteers. Uh, they help us with uh, our resource room, facilitating one-on-one -on -one services, which include our resumes and our practice interviews, um, and even facilitating classes. So that's such a big help to all of us, um, awesome. um, organization-wide, yes. <laughs> And I understand we now have a new cast member who started yes. in food and beverage here at the Disneyland Resort. Yes, we do have a few of our clients who are now Disney cast members. Uh, one who is working at the Disney Hotel. Uh, he has overcome so many things since starting at Chrysalis and we all saw him change. When he first walked into our doors, he was extremely timid. He didn't even want to look anyone in the eye and have, seeing him in the 100th job celebration was such a, you know, such a change. And he said something that really stood out to all of us. Um, he mentioned if Disney, if heaven had a little cousin, it would be Disneyland. So <laughs> <laughs> it's so great to see how our clients' lives are changed, not only by coming through our program, but you know, we're one of their biggest supporters. So um, being an employment specialist really, um, it's so fulfilling to me to be able to give back to the community. <laughs> First of all, thanks for coming here. You guys are doing incredible work and we are incredibly proud uh, to be associated with you. So thanks for coming up Thank on stage. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. If, if you think about that again, if, if you're tracking with me here, this um, a gentleman down on his luck, uh, a place to live, a way to get a job, comes to work for Disney. You know what I'm gonna say next. The Aspire program is there, as I understand it. He's interested in the Aspire program. So just imagine uh, what happens next. The whole system starts to work together. So again, we're really proud, and I want to thank the Chrysalis organization again for everything that you're doing. Um, I want to go on to Chalk now, the Children's Hospital of, of Orange County. Jenna was up here a little bit earlier. Um, you know, my great uh, partner, Kim Kripe, I think is, is traveling today. But this is a very special relationship for us. And as Jenna said, it's a, there's a long history here. This goes back to Walt Disney himself. Uh, he sat on the community committee that actually got uh, the Children's Hospital of Orange County uh, open. And so whether it's Walt's early fundraising or the $5 million gift that Jenna talked about in terms of creating that second tower and the super cool turtle talk experience that's taking place in there, um, we take a huge amount of pride uh, in terms of our partnership with Children's Hospital, Children's Hospital of Orange County. We just did uh, our latest uh, chalk walk. 13,000 people showed up. I didn't get the final number, Jenna. It was a $2.5 million, $2 million that we um, raised. Um, and it's just, you know, it's one of those events that I look forward to every year, standing in front of, you can see it here, standing up on that stage and clapping as these guests come by is just, it's one of the most amazing experiences that you can have. Um, this year, um, Lizzie Boyle and her daughter Ella and family came and joined us up on, on stage, and they have a very a tight tie with chalk, and they were just an unbelievable family. And I wanted to invite uh, Lizzie up for a moment just to talk about her experience with chalk. Lizzie. First, thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. Like I said, standing in front of 13,000 people giving a presentation is not necessarily an easy thing. You guys were awesome. So, thank first, you. tell me a little bit about Ella. So um, our daughter, Ella, who is eight now, uh, when she was four in January, uh, we went to a park and we found a mass on her arm. And basically, within the next 24 hours, we were admitted into chalk and everybody who walked through that third floor hospital room is now our family. Uh, we met our oncology team, uh, child's life specialists, and uh, we found out that she had Ewing sarcoma which is a very rare bone and soft tissue cancer. We were sent home and in February, February 12th, was our first admittance. 
and Ella did 14 rounds of chemotherapy over a year and a half. To date, she's had eight surgeries, and she's actually our little miracle. They removed her, uh, apparently you don't need two leg bones to walk, and they removed one of her right leg bones and put it in her arm. So she is a walking little miracle. Uh, mm. She taught herself how to walk five different times, and that's really why the chalk walk is so dear to our hearts, because in that hospital, in, in the, those halls, she taught herself how to walk time and time again uh, through the side effects. And there was about a 21-day period where she couldn't leave her hospital bed. And my husband tells a story of, um, we just gave her little goals, you know, just make it to the door, just make it to the water fountain. And we just got to have August 11th, and she walked that entire park waving and smiling. So we are, we are very grateful. I can tell you, Ella, uh, she's a little firecracker. Oh, she is. She was not at all worried about getting up on stage and mm -hmm. doing her thing. She was, she was just awesome. So obviously, chalk means a lot to mm -hmm. you. So tell us about this ambassador role and why that was important. You know, uh, the Chalk Foundation board, and uh, oh, they're just amazing. Um, when they invited us as Ella for the ambassador, uh, we're like, yeah, right. You know, my husband and I said, anything Chalk ever asked of us, we would say yes. Uh, it is the place that we call our home. Um, and like I said, they are our family. Um, but being the ambassador was so much more than I ever expected. Our family of four went through a very difficult time. But it was just that, a difficult time. And we're past it. We're in survivorship. And survivorship is hard. We have surgeries coming up. We have about two to three doctor's appointments a week. But the ambassadorship gave us an opportunity to leave the oncology world and meet families that we've seen walking the floors, we've seen at Turtle Time with Crush. And you never get that opportunity to say, hi, what's your story? Mm. And the ambassadorship gave us an opportunity. I gave my husband a chance to sit with other fathers. It gave um, Ella's super sibling, Madeline, a voice when the voice was taken away from her for a long time and it healed us. And we got to say thank you in the biggest form to not only Chalk, but also at the place where we had Minnie Mouse come to her room in the ICU and visit her when she was unconscious. We had Merida stand by her side when she was bald. So Disney mm -hmm. is a part of us, just like Chalk is. Well, I gotta tell Ella is an inspiration and seeing you and your family up on stage was just awesome. So thank you for coming and thank sharing you. the story with us. Thank you so thank much. You. And again, thank you to the Chalk team. This is a really special relationship for us and you can see um, on a very human level what, what this means. Um, Included in our strategy from a hospital perspective is also how we think about wish granting. And I think many of you might know that we have a very strong relationship with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm very proud of the fact that every year, just here at the Disneyland Resort, we're able to grant 700 wishes. So these are kids and their families uh, coming here and um, getting these unbelievable experiences that they're, that they're wishing for. In fact, a few years ago, across the Disney company, mainly at the Disney parks, Disney hit 100,000 wishes granted. And these are things that stay with these children and with, with these families for a lifetime. I've mentioned D23 a couple of times. I was in the audience and Bob Chapek, who's our chairman across all the parks, um, talked about Make-A-Wish and, and how we were leaning into that even more. And he showed a video, that if, again, if you guys wouldn't mind, it was just such a touching video and just shows how Disney and Make-A-Wish can come together in a very special way. So Jay, if you could run that. Upon a star Makes no difference who you are Anything your heart desires will come to you Like a boat out of the blue Face steps in Yeah. 
So again, thank you for indulging me in, in cast and community. But again, I fundamentally believe if those two things are secure, if you're leaning in there and walking the walk and doing your job, the rest comes. That's the third C. That's the commercial side of, of our business. You all know, and I reference this on the front, that we just opened Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. That opened in June. And the reaction from our guests has been uh, awesome. So we've had the highest guest ratings that we've ever seen as we open a new land, a level of immersiveness and storytelling, et cetera, is, is over the top. Very, very quick story as I stood at the front of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge on that first opening day. It's a bit intimidating because people have been waiting for this for some time and the expectations are incredibly high. The expectations are even higher when you're in a group called the 501st. Some of you may have heard the 501st before, probably many not. The 501st is a group that knows everything about Star Wars, inside and out. They dress up in the park, in the, in the costumes. If there's a Comic-Con conference going on, they are the stormtroopers. You see them everywhere. So the bar for what we needed to achieve was very high for them. And as I'm standing in the front, inevitably, here they come, the 501st. Not in costume this time, but wearing their badges. And it was this big six foot four gentleman uh, who comes up to me after having ridden the Millennium Falcon. Um, and I sheepishly say to him, what'd you think? And this big guy starts to talk to me. And as he's talking to me, he starts to break down into tears. This is his place. This place had just been opened up, and it was in physical form, something that he had dreamed about, something um, that his anticipations were so high um, of, and, and there it was. And so the reactions have been strong, um, and I'm really proud of what our cast has done on this front. Again, just a very quick video so that you can get a glimpse of some of the things that I was seeing out there the first day I was there. Jay. exceeded my expectations, but exceeded my hopes. It's 40 years in the making. Been waiting for this my whole life. Thank you so much, sir. Congrats, the first lightsaber's coming out. Awesome. I have goosebumps and I'm shaking and we'll probably be crying the whole time I'm in here. Walking in here, you feel like you're somewhere else. Like, this does not feel like it's planet Earth right now. We just met Chewbacca. He's our favorite Wookiee, and she was just in love with him. She went straight for his face, wanted to snuggle with him pretty much, take him home. <laughs> That's why we got this one with us. I'm four again, playing with toilet paper tubes with my dad, playing Star Wars in our backyard. It's overwhelming it's beautiful. how beautiful and detailed, and it's it does take you to another world in a galaxy far, far away. And that's still happening. I get a chance to walk out there most days, and guests are still reacting the same way. So super fun. Um, just a quick side note, something I'm also very proud of. Uh, in the most recent edition of Time Magazine, uh, they voted Star Wars Galaxy's Edge one of the world's greatest places in 2019. So I want to now move on to other announcements that we've recently made again at the D23 uh, conf conference. Um, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was big and it had this big economic impact. There's a lot more coming. So over in Disney California Adventure, uh, we will be introducing uh, an Avengers uh, campus. Uh, here you'll get a chance, you can see the rendering here, to go inside and suit up with some of your favorite superheroes. Uh, it's a campus in the sense that we're trying to attract the next generation of, of superheroes inside of this land, a new Spider-Man attraction. I've had a chance to go up uh, to Glendale and actually ride this attraction. You're going to be sitting inside of a, a ride vehicle actually slinging webs and pulling in the, the enemies, so to speak. There's a, um, what we're calling a PIM test, uh, test kitchen, if anybody knows Ant-Man. Are, are the wasp. They make things bigger and, or smaller with their pin particles. So you can imagine we're going to have a ton of fun with this new uh, test kitchen. 
Again, going back to the CAS side of it, anytime we're developing something new, the first thing on the agenda is how are we engaging our CAS members? How are we making them feel special and connected to it? Just recently, we had a chance to go out and let all the CAS members here sign the highest beam that will go into this new land in Disney's California Adventure. And again, it just makes you feel like you're part of it. You get to do something special that you, as a cast member, will be embedded in the history of this, of this very special place. In addition to this new land, which is opening uh, this coming year, where we announced a new parade called Magic Happens. If I had a lot more time, which clearly I don't, I would go into a lot of detail on this, but a super new attraction for the Disneyland um, Park. This is the first Mickey attraction that we've ever done. It's going to kind of put you inside of a cartoon. I think this is going to be a huge showstopper coming into, into Toontown uh, soon. So we've got a lot of stuff coming out of the ground, but everything's not an attraction. Uh, we have things like Max Pass and Mobile Order. Uh, Max Pass is a good example of a way that we're continuing to push and further our business. So this idea of being able to access fast passes, you got to pay for it, but you can book your fast passes online now instead of running from one attraction to the next. And what that basically means is we're creating a win-win situation. We win, obviously, because from a commercial point of view, we're driving more revenues. The guest ratings, we know, goes up substantially when they buy MaxPass. They're distributing themselves through the parks, getting on more rides, so it works. And we're going to continue to have to push ourselves on how we think about this place to make it better for the guests, but also make it better for uh, the business. Mobile order, you know. If you've been to Starbucks, you're mobile ordering. You can now do that here at Disneyland as well to make sure that you're moving about the park and spending time where you actually want to spend time. Above and beyond these technological advances, the basic element of seasonal celebrations is very powerful for the Disneyland Resort. So whether it's Lunar New Year or food and wine or the holidays, uh, we're continuing to roll this out to create urgency to come. In fact, just this week, we launched Halloween time. I know it's, it's a little early, but the guests love it and they wanna come and experience Halloween here. Uh, Bill O'Connell back here, I was talking to him earlier, he said that was his idea. Disneyland should do Halloween, and we started doing it. So thank you, Bill, I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> so we have a brand new party called Oogie Boogie Bash. We used to have the private party happen over at Disneyland. We've shifted it over, over to Disney California Adventure. Uh, really cool separate entertainment, world of color show, et cetera. I think we have about 20 of those uh, special events. Um, I'd love to say go buy a ticket, but we are sold out, um, which is, again, a good thing from a commercial point of view. Um, but these, these entertainment overlays are incredibly important for us, and they do drive visitation. They do drive uh, uh, great guest scores. Okay, I'm going to close this thing out. I was finishing up with the third C, again, that was, that was commercial. And um, we have a huge obligation here at the Disneyland Resort to make sure that we're preserving the magic of this place, preserving the legacy of this place, the tradition of this place. You're seeing an image here of me in, in front of the castle. Uh, this was right before Star Wars Galaxy's Edge had opened up, and we wanted to make sure that our castle was you know, spit-shined and, and ready to go as people started showing up for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And so it takes a lot for us to put a scrim in front of the castle, um, but we did that. I got a chance to get out there, and before it was unveiled to the world, I got a chance to uh, actually climb up um, onto the castle. This is the highest spire on the castle. I mean, who gets to do that? So there I was standing on front. Uh, Mrs. Chris Tyler, she runs the, the uh, Disneyland Park. Uh, but as we climbed that, and as I came out to meet the team who was giving me the tour, I had an opportunity to talk to some of the team that had worked on, on, on the uh, unveiling of the castle. Uh, and as we went around and did introductions here, there was uh, somebody that stood out to me a bit. This is, um, you could see him on your right. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Mike Fagan. And as people went around and introduced themselves, he introduced himself, but he was a little bit shy and uh, understated. And as other people started talking about their roles, they kept going back to Mike uh, and talking about that he had been here for 40 years and the, and the craftsmanship and the pride that he takes in everything that, that he does. And as I walked on the castle, you start to look at brush strokes and you start to think about the individual nails that, that are going in there. And you start to think about people like Mike Fagan, who's been here for 40 plus years, and him putting everything that he has into the Disneyland Resort. And sometimes that stuff gets missed. Sometimes we think that the big shiny thing, the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, or even in this case, the castle, is why people come. But I fundamentally believe that the reason people are coming is because of Mike Fagan. 
And I fundamentally believe that the magic that's taking place, whether it's here in this park or out in the community, is because of these cast members. And so, you know, when you think about where does magic come from, in my opinion, and I hope my team's opinion, in this case, magic has a name, and that name is Mike Fagan. And I think um, magic is all around this resort. The 31,000 cast members here, if we're taking care of them, if we're doing everything that we can for them to achieve their dreams, the rest of this stuff happens. I wanted to end with just a fun little clip here, um, and then I promise I will let you guys go. Uh, a few months ago, if you, any of you watch YouTube at all, it's likely that you saw a clip here with Stitch. Has anybody seen this? Good. Not, no, not many people have. So um, what's going to happen here is Stitch is uh, going to come from backstage in Disney California Adventure. This two-year-old girl gets excited to see Stitch. She comes out. She falls down. And then Stitch decides to do something. So let's watch this. Can we do this? So I show you that because, yes, it's, it's sweet and fun, and it got several million views on YouTube. But I show, you, I show you that because of the moment that was created there. And Stitch, the cast member who created that moment, I went and spoke with Stitch shortly after I saw this video um, just to say thank you. Uh, and Stitch looked back at me and said, well, of course I would have done that. Uh, but the reason that Stitch does that is because Stitch feels like uh, he's part of something. He's, he, he has the authority to go do something special like that. And this family will not write to me. I get a lot of letters. They won't write to me about Space Mountain or the parade. They're going to write to me about a moment, an interaction that happened because a cast member felt like they were in the right environment to be able to deliver that magic. This right here is how the whole thing works. And for any of you with businesses, I can guarantee you this is how it works. The moment you put your arms around your cast or your employees, the moment you put your arms around the community, the rest is going to happen. So I know I went way over. Jay, thank you for that horn. We'll talk about that later. But um, I want to make sure what you're taking away from this is uh, three things. Number one, take care of your employees. Take care of your cast in our, in, in, in our sense. They should be your family. Number two, support the community. Don't support the community because it makes a good headline or because you just happen to do business in that area, but because it is actually your home. And make sure you're thinking about it that way and act that way. And the third is innovate your business, but at the same time, protect who you are. Make sure you don't lose sight of why you got to where you got. The way we like to think about this one is picture Walt walking around on Main Street here. Would he say, I'm proud of what you guys are doing, or would he roll his eyes at us? And I think he'd be really, really proud. So I know my message is simple here. I hope it resonates with some of you. This is what we are going to do, and if we do it effectively, and I think we are, you're going to see the economic impact that I talked about on the front end of this presentation. Again, it's so nice to see so many familiar faces. I know it takes a bit for somebody to get here, but I truly appreciate you being here. I appreciate all of your support, and I thank you for listening to our story. Take care, everyone.